Brandon, it finally happened. We got confirmation from Nintendo about the Switch 2. It, of course, it's the middle of the night, but if you haven't followed the news update that we just posted on the channel, uh, Furukawa, like Miyamoto likes to do, just took over NCL's Twitter and decided to say like, hey, we're gonna talk about Switch 2 this fiscal year. He also provided timing for the next Direct, which we're gonna talk about here in a moment, but the real big headline here is that we now know for sure, kind of, when we're gonna see the Switch 2, when we're gonna catch sight of it for the first time. Uh, we have a admittedly pretty narrow time frame for this. Um, but I gotta, I gotta ask if you've, if you've watched our update, which you should, because it has all the details about the actual tweet itself. Um, but if you haven't watched it, uh, I've already given my opinion. Go check that out, Brandon. I want to throw it to you. Uh, did you think this was going to happen in this way? So funnily enough, I, I did. Uh, our Discord members for the last day or two have been talking about um, this report that Nintendo was going to do and the fact that it would make sense for them to bring up the Nintendo Switch 2 right now just to let investors know what's going on. And here we are. They they did it in kind of a super weird Nintendo way where they told us essentially nothing outside of we're going to announce it this fiscal year but not at the Nintendo Direct, so don't expect that. So it's it's a good it's a good transparent message. It's concise. It tells us all we need to know right now and then Let's just get on without like them having the pressure of uh, expectation from fans. Yeah, I thought that was interesting that they that they went as far as to tell us, hey, you're getting a direct in June and we're definitely not going to show you Switch 2 there. And, and to be clear, I keep saying Switch 2, but that's just because it's the easiest shorthand. They're officially calling it the Switch successor currently. Like you said, they're, they're really telling us nothing of value uh, about the platform, which again makes sense. Uh, this this rings very true to the the days of Project NX, right? When yeah. Nintendo knew the Wii U was floundering, and we got some vague kind of like, yeah, we've got a new thing coming. It's called Project NX, and we'll tell you more later. And and unfortunately for us in the Wii U era, that later took a long time to come. Uh, however, we we've got a pretty narrow window here because Nintendo mentioned that this is going to occur within this fiscal year for Nintendo and that it's going to happen sometime between June and the end of the fiscal year. So a, a, a June direct, not a surprise, right? No, I mean, that's the typical E3 season. You would hope there's a direct around there. Yeah, exactly. So so we're not, ex you know, it's not a surprise to find out that we're getting a June direct. We're, we're in May now. So obviously I, I think that solidly... <laughs> you know, puts puts the lid on anybody who might be thinking that we'd get a direct this month. Um, so we'll we'll likely get one, you know, we'll, we'll definitely get one in June. Uh, but the question is, now if I remember correctly, Brandon, I, I speculated about this in our news update video, but doesn't Nintendo's fiscal year run through to the end of March every year? I believe that is correct, yes. Yeah, like we just entered a new fiscal year for Nintendo, <laughs> like, like a month ago. Uh, so... That gives them about an 11 month window to, to or, or a 10 month window to get this done. Uh, when you take away those three months from June, you're talking about just seven months in which they can, they can really feasibly reveal this thing. Now, of course, it's really important to say there's no mention of release timing here. Uh, right. and, and I didn't expect there to be. This is strictly like when they're going to pull the, pull the cover off this, um, do you think this happened as a result of like pressure from shareholders that that they're like, what are you doing? The Switch is almost a decade old. Do something. Yeah, I mean, even in the tweet itself, Furukawa mentions that Nintendo Switch at the time NX was announced in March of 2015, uh, nine years ago, over nine years ago. So uh, it's about time. Um, the hardware is aging. It was technically aged when it came out. Um, and I think even in addition to pressure from shareholders, there's pressure just from the public eye. Like, there's a big question mark. Nintendo, what are you doing? Um, the, the second half of the year is currently a blank slate. We know that we're going to find out what will fill that time in June. But I don't anticipate it will be anything earth-shattering. Um, 
now that we know for certain that this is Switch's swan song year, they, they want people to know that the next thing is coming um, before they even reveal that slate of games. Yeah, I, I think that that's an interesting tell because we've seen year over year that Switch sales are starting to diminish, right? And that makes sense. You've sold like 150 million or however many it is. Like you're, you're approaching, you know, all time record setting status with the Switch One. Um, it, so how many more people do you have that are interested that you could possibly continue to sell through to? Um, and the Switch is unlike uh, modern consoles in the sense that you know, Sony and Microsoft are knowing, known for doing mid-gen refreshes. And while we did get some kind of hardware design refreshes with the Switch OLED and with the Switch Lite, we didn't get anything that changed the horsepower of the device. So we're still rocking that original 2017 hardware, even in the OLED right now. Uh, so it definitely feels pretty long in the tooth at this point. Um, I speculated on our, on our weekend Nintendo podcast on our Patreon that Nintendo's probably just going to continue to trot out like bite-sized titles for the rest of the year just to keep this console afloat until they can, you know, officially remove the veil of secrecy over the Switch 2. Uh, what, what's your thought on what Nintendo's content strategy is going to be for the next essentially six months? I'm pretty much in agreement, and we technically already have uh, proof of that, I guess proof, but... Um with the ESRB leak for Nintendo World Championships, any NES edition. Uh, that is the smallest of the small kind of release. As cool and novel as it is, that is not something that's going to break down the door when it comes to sales. So, uh, and we're, we're already seeing like smaller games released this year, like uh, Endless Ocean, Princess Peach Showtime. We have Paper Mario coming out in a few weeks and then Luigi's Mansion uh, 2 HD after that. Though nothing there is earth shattering. Paper Mario might have a lot of like core fan hype behind it, but I don't see that being a game that is going to sell millions upon millions. I hope it does, but I don't I don't see that happening. So for the rest of the year, I am totally expecting remakes, ports, smaller, sillier projects, maybe a rhythm heaven. Maybe they just have a third WarioWare in the works somehow. Um, just smaller <laughs> stuff. Maybe a Mario Party. I could see Mario Party happening. Yeah, I, I wonder where we're, what we're going to get for the rest of this year. Because I, I agree with you. I think that while all of these games that you mentioned are cool, like I'm, I'm actually quite excited about a lot of these games, uh, none of them are really system sellers in my opinion yeah they're they're things to keep you entertained if you already bought into the ecosystem but nobody's gonna or, or rather very few people are gonna rush out to buy a switch you know in in year eight of its life to play thousand year door if they didn't already have one uh very few people are picking up a switch for princess peach showtime luigi's mansion 2 they're all cool games i'm very excited for them as a current switch owner um but they're not going to you know cause a massive uptick in sales, right? This is just to avoid kind of Nintendo's historically slow final years for their console. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it with Wii, Wii U, GameCube, uh, where that last year, that transitionary year is just a, a complete drought. And I think Nintendo is doing really well to kind of not have that this time. Uh, I think they understand that the Switch is kind of, you know, the most popular console they've had in a very, very long time and it behooves them to keep the player base engaged. Uh, because if you're still buying games in, let's just say eight months from now, uh, and Nintendo announces the Switch 2, presumably, with backwards compatibility and that you don't have to lose that library, uh, it, it makes sense to upgrade, right? If you bought one seven years ago, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a no-brainer. Like, oh, hey, I got my use out of this thing. Let me go drop another two or 300 or, I, I don't know, maybe even 400. Uh, to to get the latest version. Um, I, I wonder, I have so many questions about where Nintendo's going to go with this. Um, I don't want to jump fully into predictions yet. Uh, let's start with uh, the Direct, though. Because since we know that we're getting a June Direct, and, and again, real alley-oop kind of announcement, like anybody who follows Nintendo knows we're getting a June Direct. Um, and I know you've kind of alluded to the fact that you're expecting smaller games. What do you, what do you think we'll see at that Direct? Uh, to outline the rest of 2024. 
Well, there's two games that I've been waiting for basically the entire Switch life cycle to come out, and that's Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. Yes. One or both of those, I think, will come out between now and the Switch successor. Ideally both. Um, I think outside of those games, the only like the only game you're really looking at to, to port over from the Wii U at, at that point would be like Xenoblade Chronicles X, maybe Yoshi's Woolly yeah. World. I have a harder time seeing Woolly World happen since it got a 3DS port. Um, so it's not technically stuck on the Wii U, but it is stuck on a dead handheld now. Um, but, you know, that, that would be low lift. Those are games I think are already done that they've just been sitting on. We know that they've done that in the past. Um, and yeah. this would be the great... Uh, the, this would be a good time to release something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker are very high on my list of games that I want. It astounds me that they're not already there, I thought, in the run-up to uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which amazingly is about to turn a year old. Gosh. Um, <laughs> I, I thought that we would we would have these by now. Um, for me, I'm so I want to I want to position this correctly. I'm trying to think of how to say it again. It's like one in the morning here, <laughs> but um, I I am wondering if we'll see the rest of Metroid Prime Trilogy like remastered drop on the Switch One, and and the reason I say that and the it leads into the big question I want to pose. Uh, it stands to reason that this June Direct may very well be the last for the Switch One. Right. It is, depending on, on the timing with which Nintendo wants to pull the cover off of the Switch Two, this may be the final headlining Direct for, for the current iteration of the Switch. Um, do you think we're going to see Prime 4? Do you think Nintendo is going to deliver some kind of update on Prime 4? And if they don't, would you take that as confirmation that it's now a cross-gen title? I think if we don't see it this June, then it is definitely a cross-gen title. I think if we see it this June, it's still a cross-gen title. That is a game that you want on your new hardware, especially this late into the, the Switch lifecycle. That's a game that's going to really show off what you know updated hardware could do. Um, I'm sure that whatever like system gimmick or cool new thing that they're doing with the Switch successor uh, will have games that represent that, but they're going to need something like Metroid Prime 4 that is a quote unquote like core experience that they can release alongside those more experimental games um, to appease a wider audience, I think. I, I, I think that makes sense. I, I've been saying this for a long time. Um, on our on our patron exclusive podcast that Nintendo I don't think is uh is is going to let the opportunity to recreate 2017 pass them by. No. <laughs> so I I think honestly we're probably going to get very similar launch timing. I think that we get the reveal of this in October. And that gives people a little under 6 months to prepare, you know, for for presumably a big purchase, right? Um and, and to plan their plan their finances out to pick up a Switch 2 and whatever the launch titles are. And when you look, I, I think that Nintendo in an ideal world would have had a Zelda ready to go for Switch 2. Now with Tears of the Kingdom having just released a year ago, there's there's almost no way. And, and I say almost just because I never like to be this certain about anything, but I'm as certain as I can be that there's no way that there's a triple A Zelda ready for next year. <laughs> Uh, just not happening. Um, so I think that Metroid Prime 4 is the game that fills the Zelda slot in the lineup. It's right. It is the game that appeals to the core gamer audience. You know, the more hardcore gamers that have followed Nintendo forever. And then I think you you pad that out with um, either either a Mario at launch because that is a game I believe they could have ready right now. I think they could have a new 3D Mario ready to go. Um, or you save it for closer to the back of the year, like they did with Odyssey. Like you bring it out, like what was it, October? Odyssey came out in 17? Yes. Yeah, so you, you bring Odyssey out right before the holidays, right? In in the middle there, you get a, a new Mario Kart, a Splatoon, some new IPs, some Nintendo published indies, and you let your third parties do the rest because I'm sure there are loads and loads of third parties 
uh, that are waiting to get their their games on a more powerful iteration of the Switch. And uh, to be clear, I, do you expect this to be a, a more powerful version of the Switch, or do you think Nintendo is going to go in some different direction with this? I think... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think the fact that Furukawa's tweet called it a Switch successor is telling. I don't think yeah. they used the verbiage successor uh, when they announced the NX. They distanced that as far away from the Wii line as they possibly could leading up to that console's reveal and launch. But the fact that they're calling right. this Switch successor tells me a lot of things that it is going to be a portable device, that it is very much going to be a Nintendo Switch of some kind. Um, so I do expect it to be a Switch that is more powerful, but I do expect it to have some weird new thing. And, and that's a good question. What do you think the weird new thing could be? Like, it, let's let's break out of, out of reasonable speculation and, and just go pie in the sky, what would you want the weird new thing to be? So it's, it's kind of interesting. I've been spending a lot of my time the last week or so playing my 3DS. <laughs> I, uh, I just oh, recently okay. played Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, the remake. Um, I'm currently in a Mario RPG fix leading up to, to Paper Mario. Um, so I decided to give that a try because I never played the remake before. And I don't know, something about that two screen experience is calling back to me. I don't anticipate Switch 2 will have a dual screen experience quite the same way that the Nintendo DS has, but there is potential there. And however that takes shape, if those patents that we have seen recently come to light, um, in the new hardware, I think that could be cool. You know, they tried that with uh, Super Mario Party where you could line multiple switches up together and yeah. play that tank mini game. Uh, also match up bananas. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, th I think there's potential there. It'd be kind of cool like if, if there was another screen, whether or not it's connected or modular in design in some way. I really like the idea of a modular Switch. The Switch is already modular, technically, because of the Joy-Cons, but taking that further, I think that'd be cool. You know, that that is a really cool concept. I like the idea um, of of kind of a dual-screen Switch. And for the longest time, I, I wondered why Nintendo didn't make a second-screen app for, like, households that have multiple Switch consoles in them so that you could maybe have have a switch you know that's acting as like a wii u gamepad for one that's in the dock um for me personally uh, we just did a discussion on this our favorite implementations of 3d and again this is pie in the sky wishing this is not something that's going to happen i wish that we could get another 3d screened handheld i would, I would love, that, love to have like if you gave me a switch that literally doubled the power of the current one so that i could then run switch one games in 3d I would be in love with it. I would love to play Breath of the Wild in actual stereoscopic 3D and just see what that, that looks like. Smash in, in 3D, stuff like that. Uh, Nintendo created this kind of singular magical experience with the 3DS and, and it's it's just never, we're never going to get it back. So uh, I wonder though, I, I do think if I were to take a more grounded approach um, in my speculation, I'm going to say that Nintendo's gimmick would would likely be some something along the lines of modularity if we look at the rumors uh the current or the most recent rumors that the switch joy-con will be magnetic i could see them using that in in kind of a way you described to like link multiple consoles together and give you the ability to create some some unique experiences that you can't have uh one thing that i have mentioned over the years that the switch has been out would be getting getting four switch consoles together putting them together on a table and having like a like an almost analog mario party right like oh, you man you use a joy con as a set of dice and you roll the dice with one joy con and you just pass it around and then mini games are all touch based and you and you play across the four uh switches as though they were one contiguous screen and you can just 
play play your games like that and have a full view of the board the whole time like you were playing a real board game that's i want that i want that so bad as a big <laughs> board game and tabletop fan you are like speaking right to my heart right now <laughs> i i would love it if nintendo did something and it feels like the kind of crazy wacky thing that nintendo would do some some crazy thing that requires four people with four consoles and and I, nintendo's done it before so I, I think it's important too. like the crazy thing that they do if they do a crazy thing for this system will be a crazy thing that does not interfere with just a standard gameplay experience not something like yes. the wii u gamepad where it's so intrinsically linked to the console that you cannot play it any other way i i think it'll be non-invasive but cool i think a lot of the weirdest stuff will appear in the form of cardboard labo kits the kind of weird experimental stuff that you can do just by selling you an accessory i think nintendo has figured out that strategy with the switch and if they want to do something crazy then they can just sell you a piece of plastic that does the crazy that doesn't affect your main system yeah i could see that i mean when you think about it nintendo didn't really go as far in with Switch customization as I think a lot of us expected them to back mm -hmm. in 2017. When we first saw Joy-Con, we were like, oh, they're gonna make different ones. Ones with D-pads, ones with GameCube sticks, ones with different triggers, and we got none of it. And Nintendo stuck to the, the tried and true Joy-Con design and never really veered from that path. They made like little internal revisions, but none of us got any of the additional features we were expecting. Uh, from Nintendo. Third parties stepped in and made, you know, their own takes on Joy-Con that had some of those things we wanted, but we never got. Uh, Nintendo just kind of stuck to the formula and, and didn't stray from it whatsoever. Uh, I'm kind of expecting this time we see a bit more of that. Now that the Switch is much more popular, I could see, you know, people understand the concept of it. People know what it is and how it works. So now when they iterate on it, they can say like, oh, you know, we're if, if you're a single player focused person, maybe we will give you a Joy-Con with a D-pad. And I'm going to be honest, I hope all of them, all of them have Hall Effect sticks across the board. Oh, I hope yeah. every controller Nintendo makes has Hall Effect sticks in it for this generation. I think they, I, I hope they learned their lesson with this. The, the rumors we saw recently also said that all currently existing Switch, like first party controllers would be compatible with the Switch 2. Like in the case of the Joy-Cons, obviously they, they won't connect to the Switch physically, but they would connect wirelessly. And um, I assume that'd be the case for the Switch Pro Controller. That said, I would really like to see a revision of the Switch Pro Controller that makes it more pro than it is right now. Yes. I want a headphone jack. I want analog triggers. That's And Hall Effect sticks. If you give me those things, I that's really all I, I would need to ask for. You know, that's interesting. I've I've been so spoiled on the dual dual sense that I, I don't know that I want headphone a headphone jack. It would be nice. Uh, but I, I really just want a built in mic and speaker so that I can just that too. talk, you know, without, without having to wear anything. Um, I agree on all other respects. Uh, I, I do wonder, you know, I want to bring this up and, and we're just speculating at this point. What do we think Amiibo's role will be in the in, in this upcoming generation. Now that we know that this generation is coming, is is it Amiibo's time to die? I've been sensing that Amiibo's been on the way out for a while now. You know, every game, their functionality becomes less and less important. Not that it was ever super important to begin with, but specifically with the Nintendo, uh, excuse me, with the Smash line concluding, like that seemed to be their big commitment to make Amiibo for every Smash character. You know, they released uh, all those Animal Crossing Amiibo and nobody bought them. <laughs> they were on shelves <laughs> everywhere for dirt cheap. Um, I, I think they're really going to slow down on that and make sure that if they release Amiibo, they are ones that will sell because they're a popular character with a good design and they'll probably be few and far between. But I do think it will still have Amiibo functionality to allow you to use the Amiibo you already have for the games that already have the functionality. But I don't think that's something that's going to grow. I think it will slowly die, but I don't think it'll ever fully go away. I think every couple of years you might get one Amiibo that's just really cool. You pick it up, you know, it's a neat collector's item, and then they move on. 
Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting thing. I, I think uh, I actually disagree with you on this one. Um, I think that Nintendo... I, well, we agree on some points. We disagree on others. I agree with you that um, Nintendo has clearly been winding down Amiibo. They've been signaling their own lack of interest in Amiibo for a while. Uh, in that, like you said, in-game support for Amiibo... Just look at Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Breath of the Wild had really cool Amiibo functionality. You know, Wolf Link brought Wolf Link into the game. And that was the only way you could, you could get Wolf Link. Uh, whereas Tears of the Kingdom, it was just glider skins. It yeah. was, it, I, and I remember just being so deflated when I found out how Amiibo worked in that game. And all um, the, uh, all the, the weapons from the other games and armors got baked into the game proper. So it was yep. just gliders, really. <laughs> yeah, it was such a weird decision, you know, but then Nintendo, it, Nintendo gives mixed signals because while they, they make this very half-hearted Amiibo support, then they reprint all of the Zelda Amiibos when Tears of the Kingdom comes out. And, and it seems like even now, occasionally, they're just like, yeah, let's reprint these Amiibo and sell some more. Um, so it's very strange to me. It, it seems non-committal in an interesting way, but I don't think that... I think that we're going to have legacy support for Amiibo in Switch 2, because if you're going back compat, you, you have to, right? Yeah. You have to support all the functions that the previous console did. I don't think there's any way that Nintendo launches a new platform without backwards compatibility with the current platform, given the huge install base. Um, but I also don't, I, I just don't see them continuing to release new Amiibo. I think that they're just going to focus on, you know, the, the games themselves and they'll just slowly and quietly kind of taper off until they don't talk about Amiibo at all. And I think that, That's... yeah, I, I do believe that they may occasionally trot out a figure, but I don't know that I, I'm almost thinking that Amiibo will strictly become toys that don't do anything. I think they're treading a fine line if they do that because Amiibo is so established at this point. Not that I think there would be a backlash, but you know how the internet can be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this we, is a toy know. that doesn't do anything. <laughs> Well, they How kind of you? already were. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think just from a collector opportunity standpoint, we'll get them occasionally. But like you said, I don't think they are gonna gonna really have any functionality that that's worth even talking about. Um, yeah. So let's let's bring this back into the realm of reality. Let's get let's get out of. Uh, speculative, speculative territory, or at least let's get closer to reality. Obviously, we're going to learn more about the Switch 2, especially now that we know Nintendo's reveal timing, the window for it. Uh, we're going to learn a lot more about it. People are going to start talking. Rumors are going to start flying. It's going to be like the Switch 1 all over again, where people just start dropping details of this thing. Because now that we know when they're going to reveal it, that means... We know we can we can surmise a few things from that. It's more than likely um, completely finished from a design and hardware build perspective. Mm -hmm. Software is probably pretty close uh, to what we'll get when when whenever it launches. Developers certainly have their hands on it. If Nintendo is talking about it to this extent, which is to say at all, that means that developers have this in hand and are working on it. And all it takes is one person that wants a little bit of internet fame to for info about this to get out, and and it will happen. It it happens every time. Um, it happens. Developers are people like us, and they're excited about this stuff the same way we are. You know, it happened with the Wii U. We pretty much knew exactly what that would be before it got announced. It happened with the Switch. We yep. learned about the Joy Cons and how that would all work. Um, we got a lot of weird and funky looking mock-ups and fake leaks for that, and I imagine the same will happen with Switch 2. It's already been happening. Um, yeah. But I, I'm starting to believe a lot more of the rumors that come in this specific period just because we are so close. Um, and now that we're confirmed to be close, like there's going to be a lot of info coming out, and I think a lot of it is going to be accurate. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Um, what, I want, what I want to close this discussion with, Brandon, is I want to ask you, how do you think Nintendo's going to play it this time? When, when do we get the reveal? And after that reveal, when do we get the release of the actual console? When, when, can we, when are we going to see it, and when can we buy it? I was kind of with you that I think October makes a lot of sense. Um, 
I think it's gonna come either right before or right after whatever their last first party title for the original Switch is. And that's not to say there might not be some first party titles that release after the Switch 2 is out. That's still a possibility. Um, but whatever they have majorly planned for this year, once the last thing is about to come out or is out, they're going to completely shift gears. We're going to find out what the Switch 2 is and when it's coming out. Um, I think October makes sense. If not, sometime late November or, or December, because I don't think anything happens after November. Their games have to be out by November. I just, I, I'd be weird if they weren't. Um, and then I think, I think it releases in March, <laughs> just like the Switch 1 did. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been my thought. I think Nintendo realizes that the strategy they used worked incredibly well for them. I think they realize that March is probably a really... I mean, I've always stood by the idea that tax time here in the U.S., when most of us get refunds from Uncle Sam, is a really great time to try to sell people something. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you get a little a little bump in your, in your finances that you either were or were not expecting, and you... you there's no gift giving holiday near there so you've already recovered from christmas you've you've already it, it's a time for selfish purchases and so i think that it's really smart to launch a console around that time i agree with you i think that since we already know one thing we know is that nintendo clearly is is not concerned about cannibalizing switch one sales because they're they're talk they're talking about this console six months in advance of Christmas, well, seven months in advance of Christmas this year. So if if the concern was that they were going to cannibalize their holiday sales, well, the damage has already been done with this one tweet. It's gone. Yeah. There are people now who will who know, who will hear like, oh, Switch 2 is right around the corner. Don't buy a Switch 1. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're worried about a chilling effect on sales, it, it's already going to happen. So Nintendo really doesn't have anything to lose by revealing the console in like the October, November timeframe, showing it to us and just saying like, hey, look, we know you're not going to buy Switch. We know you're not going to buy Switch 1. So hold on a few more months. Maybe don't buy that PS5. Don't buy that Xbox. Wait till March. We'll have something brand new for you. You know, um, I think that might be, you know, that, that would be a really smart move. Maybe their goal now is to just slow sales of their competitors rather than try to gain some for themselves um i think yeah, there's also I, I a agree. chance that they push some of the titles that would have released uh more frequently in this year and push a couple of them to the beginning of next year because i imagine there's also a worry that there might be too long of a lapse without first party nintendo releases like if their last big switch game for the year comes out say november and Switch 2 is is March. That's that's a pretty decent chunk of time without like a major release. So I still think there might be something small in those first couple months just to just to tide things over. And that could even be like NSO drops. Could be like uh, one of the two Zeldas if if they're not out by that point. Um, I just. I worry that, like, a drought too long could have a bad look, even if there is something exciting to look forward to. Yeah, uh, and that that is an interesting point you make, because obviously Nintendo was very much on their back foot going into this generation. Yeah. The Wii U was dead in the water by the time uh, the Switch released, so there was no... You know, they'd already had a console that was stagnant as hell. They they knew that they had to win people back with the Switch, so there was no worry about, oh, do we keep Wii U owners happy? They're like, all 12 of them? Well, you know, they'll, they'll be fine. They're probably waiting for this more than we are. Um, but you're right, this time, we're, we're going from an incredibly popular platform to an unproven one. Uh, you know, and I'm sure Nintendo has their own expectations around the Switch successor, uh, that, that they may believe, you know, hey, it's it's going to be another great one or whatever it is, right? Uh, but it, it's it's kind of, uh, we're in a position where obviously Nintendo's holding all the cards. We don't know what they know. And so do they keep this going? Does Do they even need to really worry about Switch 1 games in terms of is, backward, is this backwards compatible in the traditional sense or is this more like upgrading your phone? right like mm -hmm. all your apps still work it's just a better phone now um 
part of me thinks that Nintendo may go that route, where just it's not technically backwards compatibility, it's just compatibility. Yeah. And you open a game on this new platform and it just runs better on this new platform, but it'll be really interesting to see how Nintendo answers all these questions. And there's going to be loads of them as we get uh, further, you know, down this year and closer to the eventual reveal. Uh, you know, as we head into the summer, it's going to be agonizing waiting from July until whenever they announce the Switch 2. I, I did forget about of- one key game, uh, and that's Pokemon Legend oh, really? CA. That most certainly oh, comes true. out in the first few months of next year. So that's probably the game. That's probably your tide over game right there. That completely slipped yeah, my mind. I, I could see that. I, I also just see, I, I just don't imagine a world in which Nintendo, I mean, we know that Nintendo's working with NVIDIA because yeah. they signed a 20 year contract um, and they're amazingly almost halfway through that. <laughs> but uh, they, they signed a 20 year contract with NVIDIA. And so we know that NVIDIA will be supplying the SOC for the Switch 2. And. I have a hard time believing that once NVIDIA and Nintendo realize, like, holy crap, we sold a hundred million plus of these things that NVIDIA wasn't, like, we'll make you whatever you want for the next one. No no off-the-shelf Tegra for you. We'll do a custom a custom joint for, for you guys. And I can't imagine that Nintendo would be like, we don't want backwards compatibility. You know, I imagine they want this thing to be as, as easy of a solution as they can for people who... Uh, just enjoy the ease of use of the Switch. The Switch is the easiest console to use. You can play it however you want. And I imagine that they're going to want to just keep that ease of use. And for some people, that'll mean I just want my old games to keep working and I want them to work better. I, you know, it'll be interesting to see because I think Nintendo will almost certainly do some Nintendo y stuff. There will be some missteps, but ultimately, it's, it's, this is the exciting bit. This is the exciting time to be a Nintendo fan uh, where we get to speculate and just go wild with theories about all this new hardware. Um, but yeah, I could probably keep rambling, but it is the middle of the morning now for us. <laughs> uh, Brandon, is there anything you want to say before we close this out? Uh, I really hope there's backwards compatibility with uh, improvements to old games. I'm honestly a little bit more excited than that, than the new games coming out, because I don't know what they are yet. So, like, if I can buy that new system, put Super Mario Odyssey, and play without dynamic resolution, full 1080p, at least 60 FPS, I'd be a happy boy. That's all I'm really asking for. (laughs) Give give me Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom without slowdown. Please. That's all I need. (laughs) Yeah. Everything else is just icing, cake, you know? Yeah. It's it's an exciting time. I'm excited for, for the next year. I, I can't wait. We we now know that by this time next year, we'll almost certainly be playing games on the Switch 2. And that's just cool to know. So next summer Game Fest, we'll be playing Switch 2 games. That would be rad. Um, but that's going to do it for us. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We had to get this discussion out. Uh, Brandon and I are obviously both very excited. If you didn't know, Brandon and I do a weekly Nintendo podcast on our Patreon. You can find out more about that over at patreon.com slash gvgaming. But if you if you just want to wait it out, it will be coming to YouTube soon. We'll, we'll have more updates on that in the future uh, but that's going to do it for us we both got to go to bed so uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching we'll be back next time some nintendo drops some switch to info and until then bye see ya